on guns. My next guest has strong words for me. He says, I'm off the rails on guns in America. Ben Shapiro is editor-at-large at Breitbart.com and the author of Bullies, How a Left's Culture of Fear and Intimidation Silences America. So why am I off the rails, Mr. Shapiro? Uh, you know, honestly, Pierce, you've kind of been a bully on this issue because what you do, and I've seen it repeatedly on your show, I watch your show, um, and I've seen it repeatedly, what you tend to do is you tend to demonize people who differ from you politically by standing on the graves of the children of Sandy Hook, saying they don't seem to care enough about the dead kids. If they cared more about the dead kids, they would agree with you on policy. I think we can have a rational political conversation about balancing rights and risks and rewards of all of these different policies, but I don't think that what we need to do is demonize people on the other side as, as being unfeeling about, the, about what happened in How Sandy Hook. How dare you accuse me of standing on the graves of the children that died there? How dare you? I've seen you do it repeatedly, Pierce. Like I say, how dare you? Well, I mean, you can keep saying that, but you've done it repeatedly. What you do, and I've seen you do it on, on the program, is you keep saying to folks that if they disagree with you politically, then somehow this is a violation of, of what happened in Sandy Hook. And you have yet, I, I, I really like to hear your policy prescriptions for what we should do about guns. Because you say that you respect the Second Amendment, and you yeah. know, I brought this here for you so that you can read it. It's the Constitution. And I, I would really like for you to explain to me what you would do about guns that would have prevented what happened in Sandy Hook. If you want to do what you did in the UK, right, which is ban virtually all guns, that is at least a fair argument. And we can have a discussion about whether that's something that we ought to do well, or I've not. I've made it very clear what I want to do, which is exactly what Mark Kelly wants to do. And in fact, rather than address, okay, so your, let's talk about that. Rather than address your comments to me about uh, standing on the graves of children at Sandy Hook. You can address them to Mark Kelly because he agrees with everything that I've been saying because he feels the same way as does his wife. They're gun owners. They both respect the Second Amendment of the Constitution. They don't want to take away anybody's right to defend themselves with guns. They, well, they want to take away certain types of guns, obviously. They want to take away assault weapons, which are capable with magazines like we saw at Aurora and Sandy Hook of unleashing uh, a ridiculous amount of... Well, this is a question I wanted to ask you, Pierce, because I've, I've seen you talk about assault weapons a lot, and I've seen Mark Kelly talk about assault weapons. Mm. The vast majority of murders in this country that are committed with mm. guns are not committed with assault weapons, they're committed with handguns. Okay, so are you willing to ban handguns in no, this country across no, the country? No, that's not what I'm asking for. Why not? Let me ask you... Don't you care about the kids who are being killed in Chicago as much as the kids in Sandy Hook? Yes, I do. Then why don't you care about, about banning the handguns in Chicago? No, we'll come to that. Let me ask you this. This whole idea of freedom of speech and this conversation is very important to me and I'm glad to have you on to talk about it. So what well, started you, out as a neo, of course, a neo-Nazi murder in Charlottesville and the president's failure to denounce Nazi and white supremacists exploded into a discussion in this country about the removal of Confederate statues. Have we gotten away from the point of what happened in Charlottesville, what it was really about? And it seems to me we clearly have, and I think that was the point of the alt-right and the white supremacists seizing on an issue that they know that there's actually broad public consensus on not moving a lot of these statues. There's a Quinnipiac poll that came out today showing that 50 to 39 Americans aren't big on the idea of moving all these statues out. So they seized on an issue that they think is a winning issue for them and then tried to broaden out their appeal that way. And I think a lot of folks on the left fell for it. They want to have this discussion anyway, and so they saw the opportunity to have this discussion. But it seems like a misdirection from what actually happened in Charlottesville. The issue in Charlottesville is white supremacy, not whether some people think that statues should come down or stay up, because clearly 50% of the American population doesn't want to keep these statues up just because they're a bunch of white supremacist racists. Did uh, liberals get played by President Trump? I think pretty clearly they, they definitely fell for what was, whether he plans it or not, a trap for the left. I mean, he said... You guys don't have a limiting principle. You're going to go after statues of George Washington or Christopher Columbus or Thomas Jefferson. And now you're seeing that actually happen on the left. The, the most obvious stupid case is this banning of this, this reporter from ESPN named Robert Lee, an Asian guy, <laughs> from covering an event at University of Virginia. You know, the, the political correctness of the left is actually driving people into Trump's arms, even though Trump's initial response to Charlottesville and then his Tuesday response to Charlottesville was entirely wrong. I think that one thing that Trump has had, he's just benefited from the fact that the left is constantly reacting to everything he says with a, an enormous level of passion. And I think that that's actually a negative. Uh, even what he did last night insofar as going after the media, because the media reacted instead of doing objective analysis of where he was not telling the truth, they jumped to you know extraordinary critiques of his mental health and, and talking about how he was crazy and how he was morally bereft and all this stuff. All that does is it plays to his crowd. His crowd thinks that the media is out to get him. His crowd thinks that the media have a particular emotional animus for him personally. And so anything that the, the media do uh, is, going to, is going to exacerbate that. Well, two things. And, and by the way, and just because ESPN, I want to get it correct. ESPN has responded and they're saying they didn't ban um, the guy's name is Robert yeah, They moved Lee. him off of it. They yeah. didn't ban him. They asked him if he wanted to and he picked 
uh, something that was closer to his family. Uh, they said that they didn't ban him and it was they were looking out for his own interest. They're trying to take away our culture. They're trying to take away our history and our weak leaders. They do it overnight. The media. It's not delusion. Why, why not would delusion. you call it delusion? Because. Bruce, K, okay, forget about the disrespect. Facts don't care about your feelings. It turns out that every chromosome, every cell in Caitlyn Jenner's body is male, with the exception of some of his sperm cells. You it turns out that his brain structure is male. Wait, I need it to. turns out that he still has all of his male appendages. But, but, How he feels on the inside is irrelevant but, to the question of his biological sex. I don't I, agree with that. I'm Hi, thank you for the talk. I just had a question about a comment you made at the beginning about uh, uh, transitioning from male to female or, or otherwise. Yes. Uh, you've talked a lot tonight about how important it is to let people believe what they want to believe and how the government and us have no say telling people what they should think or what they should be able to say. I just wanted to ask, what's the harm, you know, if somebody's going to be ha a happier person because they say that they're a man or a woman, like, what's the harm in just letting them do it? I'm not in favor of government banning people who are adults. Children I'm in favor of banning because now you're talking about somebody who's not capable of consent. Right? All, of our, all of our laws are based on the ability of people to consent. If you're a child, you can't consent. So I'm very much in favor of banning gender transition for kids. I think that it's frankly evil. I think you're making decisions for children who are not capable of making decisions for themselves that are permanent and have long-lasting, significant, and severe impact. Uh, as far as adults, if you're 25 and you want to get a sex change surgery and you feel like it's going to make you feel better, you have the right to do it. You do. Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. I mean, the, the, the research on this stuff tends to be somewhat conflicting, but if it works for you, it works, right? It's a free country. Now, that's really not the question that's being asked in our society today, because I don't think there are that many people who are like, we want to ban gender surgery for a 30-year-old. I'm not seeing the campaign for that. What I am seeing is a campaign on the left that says that my child is going to be removed from my home 10 years from now if I don't agree with the left's view of how I should treat my child's gender confusion at age four. I see the left suggesting that they want to fine me if I refuse to say that a man is a woman as a general proposition. Right? If I say that men and women are separate, then the left says this is discrimination. Or the left is going to suggest that it has no impact on my business if I employ a woman at Hooters and she shows up the next day as a man. Right? Like that, that does have an impact on my business, right? but, but the, the, the left would suggest, well, you, know, you, should, you should sort of deal with it. Well, it turns out that gender does mean something, and it does have an actual meaning to people outside of you. I'm not going to go along with the general societal willingness to rewrite basic facets of human nature and human biology, and frankly, mammalian biology, in order to suggest that a delusion is true. Now, if the best thing for the person is for the person to, to continue, they can't change what they're thinking, there's no way for them to get out of it, they want to change their body so they feel that it is more in line with what they're thinking, more power to them, that's, that's their problem. And as I've said before, by the way, I've said this a thousand times and everybody on the left automatically ignores it, of course, I've said that if I were in a room with a transgender person having dinner with that person, I wouldn't go out of my way to call them by their biological sex. Because rude, right? I wouldn't do that if I were sitting right across from them. But if you're asking me in a public forum whether a man is a man and a woman is a woman, or asking me to call a man a woman in a public forum, the answer is no. I want, I want to hear, uh, no, it's guy, okay, it's okay, I, 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 want, I, want, to, to I want to hear, the, let's at least hear the argument. Let's, okay, so let's, let's hear it, let's hear it, go. What, he wants to hear me. I do want to hear it, it's fine, let he him go, to hear let's hear it. Come on, come on. I'll just, you know, so I'm ex talking. explain come how on. that's woke. So, I mean, the whole thing is, is like, oh, let's see. So during <sighs> Silent Cal, Calvin Coolidge's administration, do you know about like the great Mississippi flood back in the 1930s? I understand that American history is filled with racial evil. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and that causes some intergenerational trauma, which affects people's ability to be, you okay, know, so let me, effective, let me, okay. things like that. Fine. So let me ask you a question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why, so if the idea is that history has consequences, of course that's true. That's not yeah, wokeness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is not wokeness. What wokeness suggests is that fundamental institutions in American society no, are so... No, it doesn't. Yes, I, it 100% I ran. Does. I ran Elizabeth Warren's campaign. I helped organize her volunteers around here. I am, I am a representative of wokeness. Okay. Well, and that's just, I mean, this is all it is. Well, I mean, like, I mean, I, I, you know, I when, I, that, when I uh, went to go get my first tattoo, I, I, the guy I, I, had lightning bolts and 88s tattooed on his neck. 
and as a Jewish person, um, that's really messed up. It's, so it's basically a threat. There are, there are racist people who exist. The argument that you're making, and I'm going to close with this because this is going in weird directions, and I don't really no, want to... No, no, no. It's not I, going I don't, in I don't really want to... No, just hold this up is, a second. This I, let, is I let you get out your arguments, and that's, now it's time for me to respond, because I let you say Okay, I'll let you respond, but... No, I no, no, not but. Now's my turn. You... You are not characterizing but, what I'm saying accurately. Now, now, it's, now it's my turn. Your, your, yeah. your definition is inaccurate. The reason your definition is inaccurate is because any sentient human being would acknowledge that history has consequences. Right. But if the idea is, but that's not what wokeism is. Wokeism is a different thing. Wokeism suggests that all inequalities of today are attributable to not only historic injustices, but also continuing injustices in the now. And I've that never all disparity is attributable to discrimination. Like that, but a not just that. Not a just conservative that. is the not only person. Not and just. I want to know why. Why is it that conservatives are the only people who define it like that? Why, why are conservatives the okay. only people? Okay. 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 So we're gonna have to we're gonna have to stop here because this is going nowhere. But What's up? I, I, we're, I'm gonna have to stop with this with you because this is going nowhere. All I'm going well, to say is this. To no, sum up, I, I just I, I, trying I, to I, understand I your perspective. On it. Just one more second. On a, it's. On you a, say on a, on a fundamental you on a okay. fundamental level, you're shifting definitions to avoid the consequences of your own argument. And if the idea is, and, and, fi and, is and final point, speech. and final this point, is being censored. and final point, if you are going you to hold on, if you are also, also, just final point to sum up there. Hi. So in 2016, you tweeted out a list of 20 people that you called alt-right or alt-right friendly. It included Ron Paul, Pat Buchanan, Ann Coulter, and even Donald Trump. Recently, you gave a speech at Stanford about Nick Fuentes, who you called an alt-right lead influencer. My question is this. It seems like conservatives like you, like Charlie Kirk, like Dan Crenshaw, feel threatened by America First conservatives and America First ideas. Is this why you're smearing them as alt-right, racist, homophobic, and all these other things, instead of actually addressing their ideas and debating them? So first of all, I'm happy to address any ideas. I'm not happy to debate somebody who has joked about murdering me. That's, that's Fuentes. Uh, as, far as, as far as some of the other... As far as some of the other people who are mentioned, obviously, when I say alt-right or alt-right adjacent, you'd have, to, you'd have to date the tweet. So back in 2016, the fact of the matter is that people like Ron Paul, who has a long history of extremism, if you go back and you read the Ron Paul letters, there's a fair bit of anti-Semitism and racism in them. Uh, if, if you look at Donald Trump, who I said overtly in 2016, flirted with the alt-right, because he did in April and May of 2016, uh, that was a dated tweet. If you're going to date the tweet to 2016, you actually have to date the tweet to 2016, not to yesterday, because things change. Donald Trump, thank God, has forcibly expelled many of the people who are alt-right adjacent, like Steve Bannon, from his administration, which is a very, very good thing. Uh, as, far as, the, as far as the idea that you know, I'm, I'm somehow refusing to debate lower levels of immigration, that is obviously untrue. You can go watch an hour-long interview that I did with the aforementioned Ann Coulter back before 2016 about a book she did on immigration. It's all about lowering levels of immigration. If we're talking about tariffs, happy to have that conversation. I had it with Tucker Carlson. If you're talking about a more isolationist foreign policy, I've had that conversation with many, many people. I said this in my speech at Stanford, which people are willfully ignoring. I'm not arguing that people who hold those views are quote-unquote alt-right. The alt-right is a very specific viewpoint that sees the problem in America is a problem of demographics that suggests that white nationalism is the answer to that problem, that suggests that the problem with immigration is not a problem of culture or assimilation. The problem in America is a problem of what race the people are who are coming into the country. That is not a, a point of view that is even within the realm of, of sort of the paleocon viewpoint. That is a point of view that is actively alt-right. So the alt-right does have a definition, and I tried to be as specific about that definition as possible at Stanford University. If you want to ask the follow-up, that's fine. Well, first of all, Nick Fuentes is not a white nationalist. He's an America First conservative. He literally has a show every night called America First. You've called Pat Buchanan an anti-Semite and racist for 15 years when Pat Buchanan is a legend of conservatism. You need to stop smearing people who want to reduce immigration and criticize Israel as anti-Semitic and racist and just accept that they ha disagree with you and they simply want to put America first. Oh no, there are plenty, of people, who dis there are plenty of people who disagree with me and who are critical of Israel and are not anti-Semitic. There are plenty of people who disagree with me on all the aforementioned issues. I've mentioned some of their names and that is perfectly fine. 
if you want to discuss Nick Fuentes specifically, I suggest again you go back and you look at his videos about why six million Jews or what was it, one million Jews could not have been burned in the ovens at Auschwitz or at Treblinka. Uh, I suggest that you go back and you look at videos of him, uh, actual videos of him doing things like playing Grand Theft Auto, running over an Orthodox Jew, cackling maniacally, and then talking about how he had just killed Ben Shapiro. I refer you to a video last week in which Nick Fuentes pulls out a switchblade and starts randomly jabbing it in the air while talking about me. No, I don't think he's a mainstream conservative, and I think that it is a sin for people to conflate mainstream conservatism with that kind of garbage. Thanks. Now, we've, you, I gave you a couple questions. I gave you a couple questions. There are other people in the line. So, well, wait, let me guess your political affiliation. <laughs> it might surprise you. So, Ben, first, I'd like to thank you for being here and having an open dialogue with everybody tonight. It's greatly appreciated. Free speech is under attack in this country. So, recently, when you spoke at Sanford, uh, you smeared America First patriots like myself with all the same leftist insults Antifa uses, the same ones they're using outside to smear us walking in here today. So my question for you, Ben, is will you debate a true conservative like Nicholas J. Fuentes, or are you too scared <laughs> to defend your anti-America first positions? So, number one, number one, if you didn't notice, I answered this question like four questions ago. Uh, number two, I will repeat the answer again. I see no purpose in debating somebody who has joked about my death. That is not something that I make a habit of. If you, to, if I, if you want me to debate somebody about immigration policy who is a, a limited immigration person or have a discussion with that person, I'm happy to do so. By the way, I see a very strong argument in favor of limiting immigration, both legal and certainly illegal, to the United States. Okay, if you want me to talk about tariff policy and have a discussion with somebody about that, I'm happy to do that. If you want me to have a discussion about Israel or Israeli policy, I'm happy to do that. What I am not happy to do is have a debate with somebody who has joked about my death, called people who work for me Shabbos Goy race traders, praised the Unite the Right rally in Charlottesville. That I am not going to do. And by the way, it's, you can get, like, I'm not going to stop anybody from asking questions, but if you keep asking the same question, you're going to keep getting the same answer, so. 